Fees are amplification, helping musicians to perform better. Welcome to Fees are amplification here in California. My name is Eric. Today on the test bench we have a Marshall 100 watt super lead. This particular Marshall is in a kit form. It is an older Mojo Tone kit. The amplifier was brought in by a customer to have the output tubes rebiased. During the rebias procedure, I found that the amplifier just didn't sound right to me. So I asked the customer to bring back the amplifier and I offered for free to revise the circuit. We will use a 1968 Marshall Plexi as the reference and we'll also make one modification that will allow the customer to play the amplifier at lower volumes without losing tone. Let's begin. All right, so we have a current customer of mine. This is a kit amplifier. This is a 100 watt Marshall Plexi. Again, this is a kit. It looks like it's from Mojo Tone. I just did a bias service for this particular customer. I made some corrections and in input jacks. The reason why I have it on the test bench is I didn't like the sound of the amplifier. It doesn't sound anything like a plexi from the 60s so we're going to resolve that issue also we're going to have this circuit redesigned so that the amplifier will play at lower volumes and still retain its tone so there will be multiple changes to the circuit and this is something that um, I wanted to do for the customer so there will be no charge to him so we're going to turn this into a Feaser amplification amplifier and we'll put a Feaser badge uh, on this amplifier. So we'll go through the steps of how we do all of that. We'll also clean up the circuit. Uh, there's a lot of solder at the soldering joint, so we're going to clean that up and make any corrections in the circuit that are incorrect. Unfortunately for you guys out there, I'm not going to give away my circuit design. That's uh, not what we do. However, I will give you some tips and pointers to get more gain out of your amplifier for those who are interested in that. So let's move forward. All right, so now we're looking at the circuit. This is a Plexi at 100 watts. You can see here at the circuit, this is done beautifully. And I want to remind you that this is done by a non-technician. This is done by a musician. He wanted to build his own kit amplifier. And you can see here that this is beautifully done. I am so impressed by this individual who put this together. We see lots of nice symmetry. We have the components uh, leads wrapped around the terminal posts. Uh, this is not really correct, but beautifully done. Um, the soldering is is not too bad you can see here and I'll show other examples where the soldering is a little bit wonky because it looks like he didn't have a high enough wattage on his uh, soldering iron that's not his fault um, the, you can see here the wiring looms uh, are beautifully done I, I'm so impressed and pleased what this uh, musician did to build his own amplifier those of you who are just starting out uh, wanting to become technicians or you just want to build your own kit this is a great example of how to do it properly we have uh, carbon composition resistors here throughout the board predominantly um, and then of course metal oxide type resistors uh, where there are high voltages you can see here that we have uh, paper and oil this was done by me when I did the bias service on this and again, we're going to modify this circuit to sound closer to what uh, Plexi would sound like from the mid-60s from Marshall. So we'll take a look at some of the soldering uh, joints that are going to be retouched in the next segment. And then we're going to start prepping to change the preamp stage of the circuit. I'm going to leave the power stage of the circuit uh, alone. 
uh, we're just going to verify that everything is wired properly. This is, again, this is a great job by this particular musician with his kit. Bravo to you, sir. Here's an example of not necessarily cold solder, but when the soldering iron wattage is too low, you get this effect here. And so we're going to fix all of that. And I just wanted to show that example. So if you're starting out and you're trying to solder these larger components and you're seeing something like this, this just means that you need to get a soldering iron at a higher wattage or a variable temperature type. Usually you can get a pretty good wattage if you purchase something from Heiko or some other um, high level uh, manufacturer. So that's that. So we can talk about the circuit design here. So the first step in revising the circuit is I'm going to begin the revision by biasing the first preamp tube. And you can bias this in any manner that you choose. Uh, you can play around with the capacitor value, the capacitor type. Um, the This is the cathode section here, cathode section of uh, V1. And so it's vast. You, you really can just sit down and play around with um, this part of the first bias, biasing the first preamp tube. And uh, there's no set value. You just play around with it until you find the sound that you like. You can be very sophisticated and put the uh, values, plug the values in a sophisticated software. You can plot it out. Um, or you can just get a ballpark of what you think would be good in there, in this area, and uh, shape the sound that you want for yourself or for your client. Uh, in this case, I'm going to put in a value that I think is going to get us in the ballpark of what this amplifier should sound like, and what we're looking for is a plexi sound from the mid-60s, manufactured by Marshall. So we're going to start here and then we'll adjust these values based on the general sound of the amplifier. So there's multiple sections of the circuit that really affect the sound of the amplifier. Again, we're dialing in the sound to mimic the um, exact sound that I'm aware of, that I have many references to for the original 60s plexis. Uh, side note, here in California, we have a lot of collectors. We have a lot of pristine examples of what plexis should sound like because we actually have plexis from the 60s that have many of them have not been, have been untouched with the original components. So we have uh, lots and lots of samples of uh, what these should sound like. So just wanted to add that in this segment. So we can talk about the circuit at this point. Uh, I do want to bring one thing to note. Um, as you're working on a circuit like this, there's rewiring, there's components that need to be removed and then new components put in. And as you're pulling this board up and down and there's only a little bit of movement, you will have the annoyance of having wires break off. For an example, this is pin three of V1 and it should be attached here. It's literally broken off and that's common so it's an annoyance that being said that's why a lot of other technicians will charge four or five hundred dollars to do a mod like this because it takes them approximately up to eight hours to not only do the mod but then un you know detect where wires have broken off because the amplifier is not working and as you fix one broken wire you can end up breaking another wire. So this is a long and sometimes difficult process. Sometimes it goes smoothly, sometimes it does not. I charge significantly less than most of the technicians here in California. Uh, for an example, I normally charge 330 and I'll let you do the math what that is per hour. 
Um, and in this case, I'm doing this free for the customer because this is a decision that I wanted to do. Um, and so he's getting all of this for free with, with pleasure. Let's get back to the circuit. We're now looking at the voltage divider here. And you can see it's getting fairly complex. These values are not set values. You can have one resistor in this um, voltage divider. You can have three, four, and five. And each of these resistors are of different values. It, there's no set value. Um, you are trying to tune the amplifier in a manner that suits your customer. So you can play around with this. Now, there is a sophisticated there's some sophisticated math here, um, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use a base, um, let's say, uh, schematic, and then you can sort of monkey around with these uh, values. So, but like the um, biasing of the preamp tubes, again, no set value, same goes here. Also, I wanted to point out in the input section, we have this voltage divider here. This was originally on the board. Now it's on the input jacks. And this is something that I do with all of my amplifiers. It's just a preference of mine. And the reason why is we'll call it for inductance purposes. And we won't go into great detail about that. Not necessary. We're just trying to build an amplifier. Also, I always use... And I recommend this to all technicians and all um, kit builders and uh, those who are trying to do their own thing here, is to always have a shielded cable at the input. So we have, uh, in this case, a coaxial cable. The shielding is wired to ground, wired to ground only on one end, only on one end. This is the other end he here. Let me see if you can see that yet. This is the other end. And you can see that the shielding is clipped and, and uh, shrink wrap has been applied. So that's something I wanted to point out. So no set values here, but it is starting to get fairly complex. Even in the uh, anode stage, we're seeing some complexity here. Normally this would be 100 um, K resistors on each side of the anode of the V1 and we've added some other resistors and we have some 500 picofarad capacitors here. These may be clipped out, this depends on the overall sound. So let's go ahead and we're going to attach that back and we're going to attach it at this section here because trying to get under here and then maybe break some more wires. So, uh, And I don't like to top wire this is not a preference of mine. I like to wire everything uh, under the board, but in this case, we're gonna put this here. So let's move on. All right, we're looking at the circuit once again. Here we have this very sophisticated section here. So the revision has been made here. Lots of stuff going on here. Again, I want to remind everyone that these are not set values. These can be many different values. Uh, we can have just one resistor here in the V1 stage. We can have multiple. You can have four or five different you know, resistor values. It's um, all about shaping the tone and doing a little bit of math here, but we won't get to, uh, we won't dive down that rabbit hole. Let's move on. Looking at V2, this is the cathode stage, and we made again multiple revisions. Both sides of the triode has been rebiased, and so we have this here. Looking at V2, still we have this 100K. I've added this 500 picofarad capacitor here as well. So a lot of revisions here. A lot of revisions here. Then this is all to shape the tone to get this particular amplifier. Uh, this is supposed to be a plexi, um, and it doesn't sound like a plexi. It sounds like a plexi, or at least it's getting closer to sounding like a plexi from, in this case, 
the night a 1968 Marshall Plexi an actual 1968 Marshall Plexi so we're dialing in that tone now and I have uh, like I mentioned before multiple references to uh, you know match the sound of an actual 1968 Marshall looking way over here on your left we have this revision as well and this is a pretty good revision if you have a stock uh, Marshall or if you have a stock uh, kit adding this re um, capacitor here can improve the sound in general it will get you closer to the actual sound if you have a kit and this can be anywhere between 47 picofarad it can be a hundred picofarad this is a 250 picofarad and I normally don't use that high of a value but like I said we're trying to get this or are we, we are now at this point getting this to sound exactly like a 1968 Marshall this was kind of the key after doing all of these sophisticated revisions this I, it was still sounding not exactly the way that I wanted it to sound it wasn't matching the other um, the other reference Marshall the at all well not at all but it was close but it wasn't uh, exactly where I wanted it and then adding this and I got lucky I just said uh, 250 Pico Ferra let me try that boom it sounded it, I got it I got the sound that I wanted and it sounds fantastic right now and I do apologize to uh, everyone out there I won't be able to give you a sound sample of this we are working on that. We are uh, creating a system where we can get uh, sound samples out to you and we will have a series of videos of all of the amplifiers and all of the sound clips that are absolutely necessary for you musicians to know um, what's going on and how the amplifier sounds. So unfortunately you'll just have to take my word for it. But this is partially educational for you out there. And I wanted to share that bit of information as well. So lots of revisions here. I'm going to show one more revision that I'd like to share with you. And I'm going to give this secret away. So let me um, move on down the circuit and we'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk about this section here. So let me get a better shot. So please hold. We're looking at the negative global feedback. This is the presence control portion of the circuit here. And we're going to talk about a yet another fairly sophisticated revision at the presence control portion of the circuit. 47 kilo ohm resistor is the stock resistor and what we've done is we've added under here is a 220 kilo ohm resistor this is a capacitor and this one is a paper and oil type. You can use whatever you have laying around. It doesn't have to be paper and oil. It can be whatever your preference is. Um, but as most people know, I really love these uh, capacitors. They are designed for high voltages. They were actually designed for tube amplifiers. Probably why they sound so great any, in any case. 0 0.0047 so we've got 47k under here is 220k it's wrapped you know from this from here to here 0 0.0047 microfarad capacitor 220k 47k we just uh, install this here and what this does is it gives you a broader range in the presence control. It seems like with just the 47k, you really I don't I don't hear much going on in the presence. It kind of brightens it up, and then it's you know not not it's not sounding as good as it should or as it could. So at adding this revision will give you a broader spectrum of sound. I feel but there is a cost to this because this is negative global feedback you're adding voltage back into the system here 
And so when you turn the knob, you may hear kind of a scratchy sound. It's not the pot. The pot is not uh, dirty. It's uh, the negative. It's, it's voltage coming back into the circuit. And that's okay. You'll hear it sometimes. Um, there's a fix for that, but then making another revision, let's say at the potentiometer stage, we'll make another change in the sound and I'm, that's not the point so in this case we're just going to keep it here like this um, so those of you who make this change and you hear a little bit of a scratchiness when you sit your presence uh, that's nothing wrong there it's supposed to sound like that okay now most musicians that I know will uh, set their presence wherever they like and they'll keep it there so it's not like they're always adjusting uh, the presence control like you would a, a volume control. So that is it. We are done. Now I didn't talk much about the um, rewiring of the master control uh, and rewiring the preamp control. Uh, that's something that I think is out there uh, that's available to anyone who's uh, working on amplifiers, technicians, so on and so forth. So that data is available out there. So I won't go into great detail about that. So this is it. We are done. And the amplifier sounds fantastic. And uh, I hope this video was uh, somewhat informative. I know it's somewhat secretive to many of you out there, but those of you who have some experience in this, you know, have some knowledge about this, and of course, uh, an actual uh, engineer technician knows all about this. So that's that. But that's how I, um, that's, this is a good way of getting an amplifier to sound the way it should sound in general. All right, so we'll do it. The next segment, we'll assemble the amplifier, put it back in its enclosure. And do, we'll do one last shot of the enclosure. And uh, let's move on to that section. Now it's time to talk about how to use the amplifier properly. We have two channels, four in total. Uh, we have a high and a low. We have channel two, also high and a low. This is non-functioning, non-functioning. You don't need to jumper this any longer. Everything's done internally. Input one high and input one low looking at channel or loudness one or high trouble and normal this is now the volume or the master volume master volume this is now the preamp preamp so you can in the channel one picking up the volume on the guitar tune there I apologize for that let's bring up the preamp functioning of the amplifier at this point and again we have a master volume and a preamp volume master volume preamp volume looking at the high channel let's go to the low channel
So I hope you enjoyed this video. I do apologize once again. I don't have the proper means or the facility to crank the amplifier. This is a beautiful 100 watt amplifier. It really needs to be cranked at least to three or four. Looking at it now, uh, the former sound sample, and again, I do apologize about the sound sample. The setting is, the master volume setting is at two, so you can at least know that you can practice at bedroom volumes. You have to be very quiet in the area that I live in, um, especially at nighttime, and this is the time that I'm filming. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions uh, about how I did this circuit, please ask. I do want to um, let you guys know out there, I won't be telling you exactly you know, how I did this because we do need as te engineer technicians to protect each other's circuits. And it's not really a big deal. Like I mentioned in the uh, former videos, the, the, the values aren't set in stone. I can change the values for each amplifier. It depends on what I'm looking for. It depends what the customer wants. For an example, we can make more gain, uh, even more than what you heard. Uh, we can reduce the gain. We can make make more headroom. It just goes on and on. So, uh, But if you have the fundamental stuff that you may be stuck on, uh, please feel free to contact me uh, through YouTube. I do want to make one note for those of you who are maybe struggling, maybe you're working on a circuit and you're having difficulties not functioning right. I do want to mention this. Check the grounds. Make sure all the grounds are hooked properly, especially when you are wiring under the board, which is my preference. Although you saw that in the circuit board, I had to put some at the top wrap, which I dislike. And this is just for the way that I, I just don't like it. Uh, let's just say that, but let's moving on. Um, check the grounds, make sure all the grounds are hooked. Sometimes you, if you have an under wrap, where you have the wiring, the grounding wires going under the board, sometimes they can dislodge as you're heating to replace components so it they seem like they're in there but they're, they're really not and you'll find that there'll be intermittents in the ground so if you have any problems always check the grounds i i uh, sometimes forget that myself and i'm scratching my head baffled why is this not working properly i've built a thousand of these already what's the problem usually it's the grounds it's the grounds Again, we'll have a series of videos made, properly made, with properly made sound samples, um, and uh, so look out for that. All right.